Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number 13. Many of you have asked how I create my tetrahedral meshes, so today I'm going to show you how to write a tetrahedralizer. We will do it as a Blender plugin, and as far as I know, there are no tetrahedralizers for Blender yet, so I hope it will be useful. Let's start. As usual for the slides and demos, have a look at my webpage at www.matthiasmuller.info slash 10 minute physics. Since the attention span on YouTube is only about 2 minutes, let me first show the result. So here we are in Blender. I first delete the default cube and then add the Blender monkey. Here it is. Let me move it a little bit to the side first. Now in order to use the plugin, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click Install and select the Python implementation of the Tetrahedralizer. The plugin adds a new entry to Add Mesh, Add Tetrahedralization. When you click it, you immediately get the tetrahedral mesh for the surface mesh. It looks a little bit strange. The reason is that I create one non-planar quad face for each tetrahedron. This doesn't look very natural, but it's perfect for exporting. You can simply interpret every quad face as a tetrahedron. There are a bunch of parameters here that you can choose from. One is to use more than one face per tetrahedron. This is not well suited for exporting, but it gives you a very good impression of how the tetrahedral mesh looks like. There are a few other parameters that you can tweak. For instance, you can create interior vertices on a regular grid. Here you can choose the resolution of this grid. You can also specify a min tet quality. All tetrahedral below this quality are simply deleted. Now I will show you how the algorithm that I used in the plugin works. We will use the incremental delinery method. It works for triangulation as well as for tetrahedralization. Since it is easier to visualize triangles, I will show triangles in the slides, but I will talk about tetrahedra. First I have to show you what a Delaunay mesh is. In a Delaunay mesh, the circumsphere of any tetrahedron only contains the four adjacent points. This mesh is Delaunay. This mesh is not, because the circumsphere of this tetrahedron contains these two additional points. Let's now have a look at the incremental tetrahedralization algorithm. The input are the vertices of the surface mesh. First we start with four temporary points forming one big tetrahedron containing all input points. Then we add the first point. Next we delete all the tetrahedra that violate the Delaunay condition. In our case we only have one tetrahedron and it contains the new point, therefore we delete it. Next we fill the void that we just created with a tetrahedral fan centered at the new point. Later in the process our mesh might look like this. We delete all the tetrahedra that violate the Delaunay condition. Then we fill the void with a tetrahedral fan centered at the new point. This is the mesh we get when we start with the surface of a duck. There are two main problems here. The first one is that we have too many tetrahedra. This is easy to solve. We simply remove the tetrahedra whose center lies outside of the input mesh. The second problem is a little bit trickier. There might be tetrahedra that do not match the input surface. We also say that the tetrahedral mesh is non-conforming. This is a very difficult problem and there's a large body of work about it. For our purposes, we use a very simple solution. Along with the tetrahedral indices, we also keep the indices of the input mesh. Then we can use the input mesh for collision handling. As we saw in the last tutorial, visual mesh embedding still works, even if some vertices of the high-resolution visual mesh are not contained in any tetrahedron. Now I'll show you a fast implementation of this method. An important part of the algorithm is to find all violating tetrahedra after inserting a new point. Of course we could just check all the tetrahedra, but this would yield an algorithm with complexity O of n squared. Fortunately, there is a much faster way to do this. We start at the blue tetrahedron. In the first step we choose it randomly, later we use the tetrahedron we found for the previous point. Then we create a ray from the tetrahedral center to the new point. We find the intersecting phase and we move across this phase to the adjacent tetrahedron. If we repeat this process, we end up at the containing tetrahedron. Often consecutive points are close to each other, so we typically only have to check one or two tetrahedra. 
Now we have to find all the tetrahedra that violate the Delaunay condition. It can be shown that they are all connected directly or indirectly to the tetrahedron that contains the new point. Therefore, we can use a flood field to find them. At the end of the algorithm, we want to delete all the tetrahedra whose center is outside of the surface mesh. For this, we need a fast inside-outside test for points. To check whether a point P is inside the surface, we create a ray originating at P with a random direction R. We then find the closest intersection point and normal of the ray with the surface mesh and to speed this up, we use a bounding volume hierarchy of the input triangles. If the ray intersects the surface and the surface normal at the intersection point points into the direction of R, we know that the point P is inside the surface. We can make this algorithm more robust by checking more rays and use a majority vote. Now let's have a look at the Python implementation. Here you see the implementation of the plugin in Python. It's about 600 lines of code, so I won't go into the details. I will just scroll quickly through it. This is the procedure to check whether a point is inside a mesh. As input, we have the bounding volume hierarchy of the triangles of the surface mesh. We then shoot six rays in all canonical directions. The raycast method of Blender tells us whether our ray intersects any of the surface triangles. If the ray hits any triangle, we check the surface normal at the intersection point and see whether it points in the same direction as the ray. If so, we increment the number of votes. If more than three of the six rays say the point is inside, then we return true. Here is a function to compute the center of the circumsphere of a tetrahedron. This function measures the quality of a tetrahedron. The quality is a value between 0 and 1, where 1 is the value for a perfect tetrahedron. Here we create the actual tetrahedral indices. We start with the first big tetrahedron, and then we run through all the input points. We first search for the containing tetrahedron, then we run a flood fill from that tetrahedron outwards to find all the violating tetrahedra. Then we remove them. And finally, we add a tetrahedral fan centered at the new point. Finally, we remove all the tetrahedra that we don't want in the result. Here we check for the quality of the tetrahedron. And here we compute the center and check whether the center is inside of the surface mesh. If not, we don't copy the tetrahedron. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.